All righty, geometry students, welcome to uh, lesson 2.4 on biconditionals. We've got three more lessons in this chapter two um, on reasoning. And so we're going to take our conditional statements that we talked about in 2.2 and 2.3 and, and take them a step further today. So let's go ahead and start with the definitions. This is our notes for 2.4. Uh, we only have two terms. One is biconditional. Um, a biconditional is just a conditional statement um, combined with its converse. So if a conditional statement is if P, then Q, and its converse is something like, or, you know, is not something like, is if Q, then P, what a conditional statement is, is a conditional statement combines both of those and says it goes both ways. It would be like, uh, I guess I should get a different color, um, P if and only if Q. Alrighty, so that's the, that's the key word here. If and only if. So let me go ahead and give you an example. Um, I've got to change colors here. Uh, today is Friday. Yep, this is from our class, but that's uh, it's a great example. If today is Friday, then tomorrow is Saturday. Okay, so then the converse of that is if tomorrow is, oops, is Saturday, then today is Friday. Okay, so we just switch the P and the Q. Those are what we would have. That would be the conditional. It's converse. So now we can take those and combine them um, into what we call, and I'm going to go ahead and erase this to create room for it, uh, it what we call a biconditional, meaning a double or two-way conditional. Um, and that is today is Friday if, oops, if and only if tomorrow is Saturday. Okay. So first of all, don't, whether it's true or not, all you simply are doing is you're taking your P and your Q and you're saying P is true if and only if Q is true. So rather than if P then Q, it goes both ways. Um, and again, the key word verbiage there is if and only if. Um, where you had if and then with a conditional statement, now you have if and only if with every biconditional. And this one happens to be true because both the condition is true. If today's Friday, then tomorrow has to be Saturday. And the converse is true. If tomorrow is Saturday, then today must be Friday. And so not only really can we write the biconditional, but this would even be a true biconditional. Um, and so they're more restrictive than a typical conditional because they have to be true both ways. Um, okay. So let's take a look at definition. Um, a definition is a statement that can be written as a true biconditional. So in other words, you know, a definition is where you define a word or you define, define a thing or a term. Um, but a biconditional is an indication that you have a good definition. So, for example, going back to what we did for up here, a fair definition of Saturday is the day that comes after Friday or a good definition of Friday is the day that comes before Saturday because no other thing falls into that category. So it's a good way to define it. So when the book starts talking about definitions, you, a good definition is it has to be able to be written as a true biconditional. Now, when you actually have the definition, it's not necessarily going to say if and only if it's implied. Um, so if we even just use the example we we're doing above, you could say Friday is the day before Saturday. And again, that's an okay definition. Obviously, the fullest definition of, you know, it's a day, it's one of the seven days of the week and blah, blah, blah. You could give more information. But that's a pretty good exclusive definition because nothing else could be defined as that versus, you know, a cat is an animal. That's not a good definition of a cat because there's so many other things that fall under the term animal. You could say, if it is a cat, then it is an animal. That's true. But if you switched it and said, if it is an animal, then it is a cat, that's not true. There's too many counterexamples. So that's why 
if you combine those into a biconditional, it uh, it is a cat. It um it is a cat if and only if it is an animal, or if it is an animal, it is an animal if and only if it is a cat. That's not true, um, and so that's why that's not a very good definition. So good biconditionals produce good definitions, and good definitions um, can always be written as uh, biconditionals. Okay, and you should be able you could take a definition and, and insert usually for the word is or are or whatever um, the if and only if. Okay, so let's take a look at the questions. Um, first question is, what words must be part of a biconditional? Well, we just went over that. If and only if. Okay, um, left myself a lot of space here, but that's that's it. Um, and again, the way that's denoted is with the double arrow going in both directions between P and Q. All right, let's look at question number two. How do you know? We've already kind of covered this. Oh, left myself. I didn't know how much I wanted to. There we go. Number two. Perfect. All righty. Uh, how do you know if a definition is a good one? Well, we just defined that, but it's a good definition if it can be written as a true, because you can write false by conditionals, just right, you can write, write false conditionals, but a true by conditional, if and only if. All righty, and then third question. Uh, write a good definition that works as a conditional and its converse, then write it as a by conditional. Alrighty, so take you through this process of a definition, breaking it down into a uh, biconditional and its converse and its uh, conditional statement. So, uh, for example, here's a definition: uh, a triangle is a polygon with three sides. So there's your that's that's what you might find in a, a textbook or a dictionary. That's a definition. Um, why is it a good definition? Do, how would we know if it's a good definition? Well, uh, let's let's evaluate it by breaking it into a biconditional. So let's see. Uh, it is. Oops. It is a triangle. And now let's pull out our keywords. If and only if. If and only if. It is a triangle with, ah, tri triangle, sorry, <laughs> polygon. Polygon with three sides. Okay. So notice, again, there, rather kind of replacing the word is with the if and only if. Okay, so just you want to look at the two pieces here, the P and the Q, um, and then I link them into the if and only if. And so let's see, the way we can then further evaluate that is if we can, we should be able to write this as a conditional and a converse. So if, that's an if then statement, if it is a triangle, then it is a polygon with three sides. Okay, um, see if that's true. So if you have a triangle, do you have a polygon with three sides? Yes, there's no other type of triangle uh, without different number of sides. All right, and then we can check the converse of this, and we can say if it is a polygon with three sides, then it is a triangle. So we've just switched them. That's what a converse does. It's not the inverse, but it's the switching of the, of the two. And so we can see also if it's a polygon and it has three sides, then the only thing could possibly be is a triangle. I can't think of counterexamples for either the conditional in blue or the converse in green. So 
that means this is in fact a great definition of a triangle, or at least an adequate one. Um, uh, because again, notice you just all three in black here. You have two two ideas: the triangle, the polygon with three sides. Okay, the conditional statement links those two with the if and only if. A converse puts one as an if, the other as a then, and then the converse simply reverses that. Here's the polygon with three sides and the triangle. So you're just taking different ideas and you're logically placing them in different orders. And again, if you can have a true converse and a true conditional, then you can write a true biconditional, which therefore creates in red, that is in fact a good definition. Um, if I did the same exercise um, with a poor definition, uh, like, um, well, I won't confuse you. We'll just go on to the, uh, the next video and you, I'll be doing some of the uh, exercises as examples for you. All right, 2.4 by conditionals.